What's up everyone, this is Jared, and Google I.O. 2016 has come and gone, so let's quickly cover all the things you'll want to know to stay up to date. Google Assistant, so think of the way you interact with Google now already, but with a much more contextually aware and better artificial intelligence-like experience. So like you could ask it, how many restaurants are near me? And then go further by asking which ones have the best reviews? And then end with like, uh, okay, make a reservation for that one, all with conversational speech. And then they introduced Google Home, which they gave credit to Amazon for the inspiration with the Amazon Echo. But Google Home and Google Assistant are basically one and the same thing. So it's a small Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connected speaker that you place somewhere in your home and you'll be able to ask it all the questions that you would with the OK Google voice command have it book reservations and such just like you would from your phone but it's also supposed to be able to connect to other smart devices around your house so like maybe you have your nest thermostat connected to it for example uh, you'd be able to be like okay google turn the temperature down 10 degrees or okay google turn the lights down 50 percent stuff like that uh, there's a bunch more things it'll be able to do too so if you want to check it out further i'll leave a link to the keynote and any other information on everything in this video in the description below uh, next they introduced a new messaging app and a new video calling app. The messaging app's called Allo, and it's got some heavy integration with Google Assistant as well. Basically, think of Google Assistant as the closest thing to a real-life Jarvis as there is right now, and so you can expect Google to be shoving it in our faces as much as possible. But anyways, it's pronounced Allo, not Elo or Alo, it's Allo, like aloe vera, except without the vera. Uh, anyways, now that you're one of the 1% of people out there who know how to pronounce it properly, Allo is a really cool messaging app that takes smart reply predictions, just like Google's inbox email app, uh, and brings it to messaging, but in a contextually aware-like way. So if your friend sends you a picture of their brand new car they just bought, it would recognize they sent you a picture of a car, and some of the smart predictions might be something like, nice car or sweet ride, and it'll give you predictions based on the way you talk with the slang you use and all that. It's pretty cool. Now their new video calling app is called Duo, which directly integrates with Allo. And a lot of you are probably thinking, well, why not just use the Google Hangouts video calling feature? And well, you totally could, but Google's designed Duo to work with very low bandwidth and slow connections while maximizing video resolution and reliability. Uh, it also has something called Knock Knock, which gives you a live feed of the person calling you and is supposed to help you decide whether you want to actually answer or not. But I mean, say you're in a lineup at the bank and your buddy's trying to call and he's doing something really inappropriate, which I know a lot of my friends would be doing, uh, and the person behind you sees and gets offended, that wouldn't really be cool. So hopefully there's a way to toggle it on and off. So Google's own high quality mobile VR experience called Daydream was announced, which with future Daydream capable devices running Android N will allow you to run some of your favorite apps in a VR-like experience. So for instance, you'll be able to watch movies and shows from apps like um, Netflix, uh, Google Play Movies, on uh, HBO Go in a more immersive way. Now personally, based on what they showed off at Google I.O., I'm not completely sold on it just yet, so we'll have to wait for its release this fall along with pretty much everything else they showed us. Android Wear 2.0 was also announced and showing off, and I gotta say, even though I've reviewed Android Wear devices in the past, I never felt it was at a level yet to earn my money, but after seeing that Android Wear 2.0 will have standalone apps so that you can still listen to your music while at the gym, even though you left your phone at home, or even reply to messages via Google's cloud messaging, I'm probably gonna jump on the bandwagon now. Uh, it's also gonna have a totally new UI with cool new sort of bite-sized information icons for things like maybe the weather or how many tasks you have to do that day, things like that. Uh, basically, it's gonna be way more useful than its current state. Now, Android N was also talked about quite a bit, so some things that we saw in early developer previews are now confirmed to be coming and staying with Android N. For instance, the new multitasking action where you can switch between your current and last used app, a multi-window for stacking two apps beside each other, and better notification features like being able to long press to pick if you want to snooze that notification for later or turn off the notifications for that app permanently, or even reply to emails or messages within the notifications panel. That's It's pretty sweet. There was also other random things like improved security, better graphics, and better Android runtime management, which translates to, like, to faster app downloads and updates. But I think the major highlight of Android N for me this time 
was the introduction of instant apps. Think black magic, making the impossible possible, really. And they gave a great demonstration of it on stage at Google I.O., but my own version of it goes something like this. So let's say you asked, okay, Google, show me Bluetooth speakers with five-star reviews on Amazon. It would then give you a list of speakers with the most positive reviews, and you click on one, and even though you don't have the Amazon app installed, it actually opens up the Amazon app to that Bluetooth speaker's listing page, allowing you to add it to your cart and pay for it like magic. Basically, it only downloads the parts of the app it thinks you need, such as the listing page and the checkout cart, all instantly. To me, that's amazing. But I think that should cover all of the sort of important consumer-related bits. Uh, I'll have a link to everything down in the description below so you can go check it out, like the keynote, stuff like that. But if you liked the video, hit that like button. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.